when strangers meet, what they do is they ask, where from? And the next question that they ask is very often, what do you do? What do you do? We usually answer with job titles, the profession, what, what we do for a living. I'm a traveler. I'm working in over 20 countries. And I have to be honest, I'm a little bit tired of what do you do? <laughs> I'm breathing. I'm eating. I'm drinking. I'm flying to the next destination. That's what I do. Why is nobody asking me, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? And what would you answer if someone would ask you, who are you? Not so easy. Fifteen years ago, I was a career-driven executive with a long list of diseases and health issues. A very long list. I wanted to run away from the stress, from the competition, expectations. And I had a, I had a burnout. I was lost. I was at this beach in Cape Town, South Africa. And two friends of mine, they saw my struggle. And those friends said, Eric, over there in the bar, there's an old man. He's a face reader. And he knows you. What? An old man, a face reader, and he knows me? You know, I had nothing to lose. Nothing. So I give it a chance. Crossed the street, went inside the bar, and there he was. An old man, almost teethless, ragged clothes, Blurry eyes. He knows me. He knows me. Does he know himself? So I started very poor. I said, Guru, master of the wisdom, tell me who I am. And he looked at me and said, oh, I can see your ag aggressive personality. <laughs> You're not patient. You have a lot of passion but you're also calculative and a skeptic. And I said, oh, wow, I'm deeply impressed. And he said, are you? And I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't need a face reader for that. You need life experience. That's it. Oh, OK. Well, then let me tell you about your health issues. And I said, that's good, because I have a burnout. OK, give it a try. And he started by summing up everything I had, like asthma, inflammation of the intestine, allergies, my back pain problems, five, six, seven things more. I got nervous, very nervous. How can that be? Inflammation of the intestine, asthma, where is that all written? But I listened carefully to him and he said, you know, you don't live your life. You live a role, a character, but you don't live your true identity. Go out. Go out and live your life. Live who you are. And this is how my journey began 15 years ago. Nowadays, machines do face reading. Sophisticated software doing facial recognition. And they're very good in it. By creating a 3D image with the help of 30,000 dots, face ID replace touch ID. There will be more in the future. Machines do that. The promise of the digital age is if you only collect data and analyze it, you get to know yourself. And with that, you navigate the world easily. But is that true? Are we just the likes and clicks and downloads of apps and uploads of pictures? Is that what we are? Is that all? 
I tell my clients and my students all over the world, who you are cannot be seen on social media, but it can be seen in your face. The greatest source of data is your face. There are clues all over. We just don't want to read. Vessels, scars, shining, shade, coloration, discoloration, wrinkles, lines, tissue changes, muscle movements, features like eyes, mouth, hair, even a piercing. And there's a lot more. The list could be endless. Do you think all of that is just coincidence? Do you really think all those signs make no sense? No. They all tell a story. With those signs, we can express emotions and feelings ourselves. We can express thoughts, expectations. With those signs, lies can be revealed. With those signs, it speaks about our lifestyle, what we eat, what we drink. It speaks about a life path. What was the past? Maybe it speaks about the future. It definitely speaks about love. Let me tell you a little bit of a personal love story. When I was 16, and I'm a late bloomer, when I was 16, I had my first date. I was standing in the mirror of my parents' house, trying to say the sentence that is of importance in a few minutes. So I said, do you want to be my girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Do you want to be my girlfriend? Uh, I gave up after a few minutes because I found something out. I, my hair had been all over, and I saw this sit right here on the cheek. I can go to the date like that. So I used the helmet of my brother and the makeup of my mom. An hour later at the date, I was more taking care of my hair and not showing my left side than being interested in this lady right in front of me. And of course, the date went out terrible. If I only would have known, if I only would have known that it's not about hair, sits or darts when it comes to love. It's about eyes and mouth. Have you ever heard someone who said, oh, I have fallen in love with the curly hair of my wife. That's why I married her. Or this guy had cute ears, and I knew I want to stay with him until the end of my life. <laughs> no, it's all about eyes and mouth. This knowledge is thousands of years old, thousands of years. You can find it in every high culture, not only the Chinese, also the Japanese, India, South America, Africa, and the Greek culture, Aristotle, or Hippocrat, who is the godfather of the doctors. Today, we get more and more scientific proof of what our ancestors told us, old doctors, old teachers, old masters, more and more scientific proof. It's pretty good. Those signs tell us a lot about our personality, but they can cover the whole face and the whole life of yours. We only have to take a closer look on that. We get more and more scientific proof or of what is inside of us, of what we already know. Some people call it intuition, others would call it common sense. And that is written in your face. Is it complicated? Not really. You will see. I brought this guy with me. Who is he? Who is he? Not what is he doing? Is he just a man in his 50s from Nagaland, India? I think we all agree we see a giver, a warm-hearted personality, someone who takes care of others. Well, why do we feel that? A shame we cannot see the micro-expression, so we do not know what he's thinking or feeling. But with the help of two techniques, a 
Greek technique and the Chinese technique, we know a little bit about him. For example, when we look at his face shape, it's not the same as a baby. It changed over the years. It changed under the influence of his life. The face shape that we see here is a mix of a king face and a jade face, and that's a big contradiction because the kings want to lead, not follow. The kings want to be responsible. The kings want to have a legacy. They want to take care. On the other side, and that's the contradiction, he also sh shows the sign of a jade face. And a jade face is a person who is very sensitive, vulnerable, receptive. So the contradiction leads us to a warm-hearted warrior. That would be the old term. When we look at his hairline, this hairline stands for something. It says, I don't need anyone. I take care of myself. If anyone needs me, I'm there. No problem. Maybe you notice the beard. It's a common beard for police officers. It's a common beard for people who work for the fire department. It's a common beard for people who work at church. Subconsciously, he chose that beard because that beard stands for order and rules, giving balance. His eyes, the eye positioning, are eyes that are related to a self-starter. You don't have to push him. He knows what he wants to do. The upper lip is covered. You cannot see the upper lip. The beard covers the upper lip. And for us, that means he don't want to talk about emotions. He don't want to talk about his own life. He want to talk about you. He want to help you. That's him. And there would be a lot more to read in his face, also about health and love. We just don't have the time. <laughs> what I want to tell you is the following. All of you do human face recognition. All of you speak the language of the face, the face language, all of you, from the first day you're born on. From the first day you're born on, because in our hypothalamus, the oldest part of our brain, there is a part, and the job of this part is to recognize faces and look at the clues and find a way and solution and get to know someone else. This part can be strengthened. It can be strengthened like a muscle. You only have to read faces every day to strengthen this part. It's very, very simple. The face is a giver of advice for anything in life, for anything in life. So therefore, read the face. All of you are face readers, all of you. Everyone here is a face reader. So therefore, next time when you meet a stranger, don't ask, don't ask, what are you doing? Ask, who are you? Thank you.